you may have already seen sentences like these, where katori is basically the same as English who or that or which when they're connecting two parts of a sentence. In both of these examples, the subject, the girl, is doing something in that second clause. She's active, and that's why we see nominative endings. As we saw in other videos, there's another way to express these ideas. Instead of katori, we can use a participle, basically an adjective that's derived from a verb. So, to say what someone does or is doing, we can use a present active participle. Девушка, говорящая по-русски, из Москвы. Or we can say what someone did or was doing with a past active participle. Девушка, говорившая по-русски, из Москвы. Again, these are active participles because she is or was active. She's doing something. But what about an example like this? Где книга, которую прочитал профессор? Here, the book itself didn't do anything in that second clause. Instead, something was done to it. That's why you has that accusative ending. It's a direct object. It had a passive role. So much like we did before, we can replace you here with a past passive participle. Где книга, прочитанная профессором? So this sentence with прочитанная has the same basic meaning as the first with который, but again, using a participle sounds more formal. You're more likely to see these forms in writing, or you might hear them in formal context, like a lecture or a speech. Now, in terms of form, there are three types of past passive participles, so to keep things brief, we'll cover them in separate videos. For now, let's just focus on the first type, which is used for most verbs that have infinitives ending in at, yat, or yet. And the good news is that forming them is actually pretty easy. Let's just take the masculine past tense form, like prachital, drop the final L, then we'll add N, N, and an adjective ending, prachitanli. In the same way, from napisal, we'll drop the L, add N, N, and an ending to get napisanli. Finally, from uvidio, we'll drop the L, add N, N, and get uvidinli. And you might have noticed from the first two examples that if the stress is on the last syllable of the infinitive, then that stress will shift back one syllable for the participle. Let's look at some more examples in context. Мы читаем книги, написанные русскими авторами. Вот еще программа, придуманная идиотским политикам. You can see here that to say by authors or a politician, we'll use the instrumental case endings. There's no need for a separate preposition like the English by. Here's another example from a headline. 15 книг, написанных людьми с отличным чувством юмора. Let's look closely at the ending here. Написанных has that genitive plural ending because it agrees with книг which is, of course, the genitive plural after bitnatsets. Like other adjectives, participles do need to agree with the nouns that they modify, even if that noun is in another clause. Same thing happens in this example. Он читал о самых странных вещах, когда-либо проданных на eBay. Here, проданных agrees with вещах for the prepositional plural. In the examples we've seen so far, the participles have been in a second clause, right where katori would be. But keep in mind that since participles are really, they're just adjectives, they can also come right before the noun. Like in this example. Сначала люди наблюдали, пытались понять и объяснить увиденные явления. Here, увиденные явления is literally seen phenomena. That does sound kind of awkward in English. Though, you know, sometimes we do have expressions like a half-baked idea or a highly qualified person. Russian likes to take this approach to an extreme, though, so you will often see participles coming before the nouns that they refer to, and sometimes even more than one. Let's look carefully at this example. I'll add some hints on vocabulary. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can find the two participles in this sentence. Uh, there may be different kinds of participles, so try to find them, say which type each one is, and which noun that they're referring to. Okay, I found two participles in the sentence. Zdelenli uh, looks like a past passive from Zdelets, so that'll give us a sense of who was made. And Arivshay looks like a past active participle from Arit. So that's the has the meaning who came to life. So we can make a rough translation, something like this. But you know, a folk tale about the made of snow and came to life girl really doesn't sound very good in English, does it? To come up with a nice translation, you may need to be flexible. Maybe play with the word order. 
Here's my suggestion for a better translation into English, something like the folktale about the girl who was made of snow and came to life. Now, if your native language is not English, think about how you might express this thought in your own language and be aware that you may need to take the sentence apart, kind of, and put it back together again in another way. With time and with enough practice reading or listening to formal Russian, you will come to the point where you don't need to do this kind of mental translation. You'll just understand participles as they're used. And sentences like these do make it possible to have a style that's compact, but still wonderfully expressive. They're very common in print and in formal Russian, so it's worth being coming comfortable with them. Summing up, past passive participles describe someone or something that's on the receiving end of an action, something that was bought or seen or written. There are three ways to form them, but in this video we just focused on group one. That's most verbs that end in ats, yats, or yets. We formed the past passive by replacing the ill of the masculine past tense with n, n, that's two n's, and then we added an adjective ending. Now watch for the stress to shift back one syllable if the stress was on the final sil syllable of the infinitive. Participles are adjectives, so their endings always agree with the nouns that they refer to. Remember that Russian word order is really flexible, and sometimes other information may come between a participle and the word it's describing. So you may need to look carefully at a sentence to catch just what relates to what.